Yo, what is up, Yugi fam? Hope everybody's having a great day today. Welcome to another video. Man, I can't believe it's been almost two weeks since my last upload. The days are flying by, but we are back again with another video, and I'm happy to showcase Salad for you guys today. This is uh, one of my favorite decks. Um, definitely during Eternal format, this was my go-to. Um, love that format. As soon as the structure deck released, I grabbed three and I built the deck. And um, I just love the resource game. I loved what it brought to the table. It wasn't like anything insane. And people underestimated Salad big time in the beginning. I remember that. I remember some people calling the deck bad uh, because it didn't do anything unfair. But people quickly realized how insane Salad was. Uh, especially because it can abuse cards like Dweller and like just add back Ash over and over again. Nibiru wasn't a card yet, so uh, you can um, you can combo freely without having to worry about Nib. Uh, Nib definitely put a big dent on this deck. I'll tell you now. Um, right when the de right when that card released, oh man, it was it affected this deck big time. It was a hard counter, uh, but I mean the deck still pushed forward, uh, and now recently. Uh, us getting circle back to two and then before that we have stallio back at one i think the consistency shot up big time on this deck and i think the deck is in a really good position i think it's a solid solid tier two deck right now uh throughout the years i've been you know testing salad here and there uh, some formats i feel like it's a good rogue deck some formats i feel like it's not that strong uh and uh uh, and, uh, but now I feel like, you know, South is in a pretty good position, especially with us getting some cards back off the ban list. Uh, so yeah, I took this deck to the locals yesterday. I, I did make some changes for the, the profile and I'll, I'll tell you guys why when, when we get to that part of the uh, deck profile. Uh, but, uh, I went, it was a small tournament. We had three rounds, nothing too crazy. Uh, but the matchups were relevant. Uh, so round one, I went up against, um, Brave Prank, um, and uh, I got that, and round two, I went up against Sword Soul, I got that. And then la last round, I lost, unfortunately, against uh, Sword Soul Virtual World. And uh, But overall, I felt like the deck was so, so good, man. I enjoyed playing this deck, and uh, I felt like the deck was not lacking. Um, and definitely, definitely uh, a viable deck for the format. So yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to give a, a quick thanks to everybody who's recently subscribed. Uh, the deck, uh, the uh, <laughs> the channel is is growing, and uh, I'm so happy about that. I I'll, I'll try to upload more consistently. Uh, that's what I want to aim to do is try to at least get a video or two videos out per week. Um, so I do appreciate all the support, uh, all the positive feedback is much much appreciated. We're almost at 950. Um, just uh, we keep getting closer to that 1,000 subscriber um, point, and and uh, it's just awesome to see. Thank you guys again. So let's get right into it. We have uh, obviously one gazelle. Uh, this card can come back to more than one, and um, I mean even if this deck was super consistent, like it's not. It's it's uh, it's sadly been power crypt um, because. Uh, there's just so many decks that can, like, say, play around Nibiru, uh, whereas this deck doesn't really have a counter to Nib. Uh, you can There are cards you can play to counter Nib, like uh, the Trap Tricks engine, uh, like, you know, with Parallel X Seed. But to me, that that card it just it it contributes to the deck's inconsistency, uh, as opposed to you know. So you 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 trade consistency for uh, you know for having um a counter to nib but i mean uh it's uh i don't know that's just my opinion i i do like parallel exit as a card i just i just don't feel like it's worth running i'd rather the deck be as consistent as possible i mean honestly there are cards in here that you could actually trade uh for par parallel exit so it's not the worst but uh for now i'm choosing not to play the card uh, two Foxy, I actually resolved Foxy like three times yesterday. Excavated a salad card like Will, uh, Spinny, Circle. It just felt so, so good. Um, I just wanted to bait stuff out. Like I didn't need Foxy's Grave Effect. What I needed to bait out was like an Imperm or an Ash. So sometimes I would just use its effect. And if I got something, great. If I didn't, it's fine. I mean, I just wanted to kind of test what my opponent had in their hand so that's why i would activate the card or sometimes i my hand actually 
one game my hand was garbage and I really needed like something. Uh, but um, looking at my hand, there was a good chance that I was going to excavate a salad card. So I took the risk and just used Foxy. And then I excavated a spinny, which, you know, allowed me to go into Salio, get access to Gazelle, which was great. Uh, speaking of spinning, we play three copies. Obviously, we want to have access to this card like every opening hand because it's such a great card to to use to uh, when you summon Foxy, you can pitch it. Uh, when you open Mining, you can pitch it. Um, it's a decent normal summon. Like if you open Circle and this, it's really good. Uh, two Jaguar. I'm not playing Desires in the deck, but I still like two Jaguar. Again, for this, f similar reasons to Spinny, and it's a good normal summon also. It's a pretty good starter. Plus, it helps you uh, You have consistent access to Dweller. So, I kind of want to see the card more often. And then, lastly, we have one Falco. Uh, I used to play Foul in the past, and I'm still a fan of Foul. I just don't know if I want to play the card right now. Uh, but Foul is, again, just another extender that helps you get into Dweller much easier. And um, it helps you chain block as well. So, I might play around with that card in the future. Uh, so this is one change that I did make from yesterday. Uh, so I played Lady Debug yesterday. And I loved having access to Lady Debug because Lady Debug by itself is access code OTK. Um, which is insane. It's so, so powerful. But but because we got Circle back to two, because we have three mining, because we have um, uh, Murat Stallio back in the, uh, in the extra deck, uh, the deck is, it doesn't have any issues with consistency as much as it did before. Uh, so to me, I felt like I needed something to dig for hand traps, my side deck cards. Uh, so that was my reasoning for just swapping out the Lady Debugs. I don't think you're right or wrong whether you choose Lady Debug or Buffalo. I think it's all personal prefer preference. I played both cards. Uh, and I remember being Team Lady Debug like 100%. I remember giving Buffalo a chance and falling in love with Buffalo and then sticking to Buffalo for like so long when, when I was playing Salad. Uh, so I wouldn't say you're right or wrong. I think it's personal preference. Whether Whatever you feel fits your play style, uh, you know, go with that. Uh, so I do like both cards, but I do think that in this format, I want to be able to combo off, be able to dig for hand traps, side deck cards. Uh, stuff like that. In case my combo does get stopped, I have all these other defensive cards to fall back on. So that's just my reasoning. Um, so that is that. Uh, one Archiver, I really like this card. It's essentially a fourth copy of Spinny. Just a recurring resource that you can use again and again. Um, you can definitely take this out for something else if you want to. I think there's a lot of wiggle room in this deck. There's some cards that are mandatory, like... For me, you know, it's three spinnies mandatory, at least two foxies mandatory, um, uh, you know, two jaguar to me, I feel like is mandatory. There's just some cards that you have to play, like three mining, but this is a sort of a card, sort of a flex spot, not a really a flex spot, just uh, a, a, a spot where you can just potentially play something else, all up to personal preference. I just like it because it helps you get access to Stalio, it's a level three. And when you're trying to OTK on the following turn, it helps you go into Update Jammer, Transcode, into Access Code. It just, it makes so much sense. Plus, you can search it with Mining if you have, like, everything else. Uh, hand Traps, we have 3 Ash, uh, 2 Ogre. I think Ogre is so powerful in this format because of Brave. Uh, it hits Brave so hard so they, they don't get the, um, they don't get the, uh, excuse me, the Griffin. And then it also hits DPE. So like if DPE is the only card on their field and they activate DPE, you chain Ogre, they, you know, their DPEs pop, they can't even resolve it, uh, which is really, really strong. Um, and then even against Sword Soul, if you Ogre the Moye, Ogre the Taya, they don't have the level four uh, to be able to Synchro Summon. So that's pretty, re pretty relevant. And then we have three uh, Imperm. Uh, Imperm still great, especially as a top deck to stop like Scythe, DPE, stuff like that. Uh, eight hand traps total. I know that might seem a little low, but I have like other defensive cards that I am playing, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, for the salad spells, two circle. Feels so good to have this card back at two. I have, uh, it's nostalgic to be able to activate this during the draw phase, like back in the day to dodge roll. Uh, but yeah, and uh, also excavating this off uh, Foxy is just super plus. Uh, two will. I like playing two uh, because this card helps you play through nib. So if you combo off, get access to the counter trap, 
And then uh, after, at the end of your combo, your opponent goes nib, you can still activate will. Bring back the wolf, so that way your counter trap is still alive. Plus it's another resource that you can use every every uh, every turn, um, as long as it stays on field. Uh, one field spell. This is a card that you always draw. It's like the most consistent card that you don't want to be consistent. Uh, but you have to play it. Obviously, it's the field spell. Uh, there's no question about that. But man, did I draw this card. Like, as my sixth card, too. It just sucked. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's one of the uh, pains of uh, of being a salad player. Uh, three mining. Uh, I think this card is definitely still mandatory at three. Uh, you just have so much, so many good cards that you can pitch, uh, like Spinny, Foxy, Jaguar, and then Searcher Gazelle. Um, so yeah, three more copies of Gazelle. Three Droplet. Uh, this is another really strong, very very powerful card in this format. Uh, and if you have the card, definitely play it because, again, as I mentioned before, stuff that you can pitch is actually really good. I mean, like, even if you pitch, like, Will, you can get it back with Wolf. Um, and then, obviously, even if you pitch Ash, you can get it back with Wolf. Uh, pitching this, you could just use it, uh, you know, use it in Grave and Spinny, Falco, Jaguar, Foxy, all these cards you can use in Grave. So, um, you can still play, your your Graveyard is your second hand. Um so yeah, droplets is insane because it stops so many things at once. It stops the uh, the DPE, stops the scythe, stops the griffin. Um, so yeah, going second is just an insanely, insanely good card. I could have OTK'd uh, the uh, virtual world player um, uh, with droplet because I because I opened droplet, so I negated like three monsters on his field. Like a, I negated Baron Chen Chen and uh, and a Shi Shao. Uh, Sword Soul Shi Shao, but then he had Imperm, so he stopped my my access code combo, and I lost because of that. But otherwise, this card was so so powerful. Uh, and if you have it, play it. If you don't have it, play Chalice. Uh, Chalice is still a very very powerful card in today's format. Or you could play three more hand traps. Uh, two Cosmic. This is also another really good card to play in this format because of Scythe. You want to banish the Scythe. Uh, you don't want your opponent to have access to that card. You can also banish Pandemonium against uh, Prank Kids. That way they can, they can only activate it during the main phase. So if you go standby phase and you know where it's set. Um, or if they only set one card, you can guess that that's the Pandemonium and you could banish it. Uh, plus you have a main deck out to Mystic Mine. Well, another main deck out to Mystic Mine in addition to the Rage. Uh, but yeah, I think Cosmic is pretty good in this format. Uh, one Call By. This is also a really good card against Scythe. Uh, when they pop it with DPE, activate Scythe to revive back your chain called by to banish the Scythe as well. Uh, for the uh, traps, we have one Roar, one Rage. Uh, I think one of each is okay because uh, Gazelle can get you access to whatever you need. If you draw one, you could just uh, send the other one with Gazelle and add it back with Wolf. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, and then the uh, last trap, I decided to play three Solemn Strike. I thought this was a, a, such a high impact trap in today's format against like so many decks. Um, and going second, we all know that Strike is infamously good going second. Uh, um, so um, that's the reason I chose to play it. And this is also a card that I wanted to play in case like my opponent say um, hand traps me and I can't fully combo and I have this card, I can set it and it's such a high impact card that it can potentially end my opponent's turn. Uh, for example, if they go normal summon prank kid, they link into a uh, into Meow Meow and I and I strike it. Uh, it ends their turn unless they have like two more pranks and like a fusion spell. Uh, so it's just another example it, when you know PK when they go into Cherubini, strike the Cherubini. Uh, just so many good things because Ash against Cherubini won't really do anything. Um, but uh, but a strike is such it's so high impact. So uh, that's the reason I chose to play it. Uh, this is also another reason that I want to switch to Buffalo because I want it to draw into like cards like Strike, My Hand Traps, Rager Roar, Extender, stuff like that. So uh, we'll do some test hands, by the way, at the end of the video. So anybody that's possibly, you know, trying to pick up the deck for the first time, maybe I can help you uh, play the deck by uh, going through plays, um, different scenarios, depending on what you draw. Uh, for the extra deck, we have three Bay Links. This is all standard stuff, three Wolf. There's no, like, question. You should play any less. Uh, you shouldn't play any less. Uh, two Helio. This is a card that I sometimes see people cut, but I feel like the extra deck is naked without Helio. Helio, 
um, just baits out back row and it also gets over big monsters since you could shrink down like anything unless it can't be targeted. Uh, but you can shrink down so many monsters to to uh, like zero if you have an Ash Blossom Engrave or like 500 attack. Something where you could uh, beat over it. Um, and sometimes you could even like target one of your own monsters and beef it up. Um, so yeah, that's it for the salad links. And then one Lingaribo. Uh, I was playing Phoenix. I switched to Lingaribo because it's just, it's one Cybers monster. So it's one less resource. Plus like some people don't expect it. You go like Lingaribo and then, you know, they have their trap set and uh you can push through back row decks uh better with this card so i really like lingerie ball a lot you could even make it with a buffer low which is really nice so say you opened up like will buffer low like spinny uh and you don't need to go into bay links right away you can just go into lingerie ball first if you're going against like back row um so it's a really good option to have in the extra deck uh this is a broken engine it's so powerful we have uh one Splash Mage, one Update Jammer, one Transcode, and then one Access Code. These all go hand in hand together because uh, they you link climb and one leads to the other. So if you open any two of your Cybers, monster, actually if you open up Spinny, not Spinny, I'm sorry, Spinny's a bad example. If you open up uh, Jaguar, Jaguar alone will allow you to get into Access Code with multiple pops. Not an access code that can uh, attack twice, but an access code that's 5300 that will have like, I believe, yeah, three pops. Three pops plus 5300. Um, so uh, Splash Made makes that possible because you go into your Bay Links and then you search the field spell, link into another Bay Links, use Jaguar effect, shuffle back one of the Bay Links, summon Jaguar, go into Splash Mage, Splash Mage revise back the Jaguar, then you go into Transcode, Transcode revise back Splash, and then you go into your Axis Code. And uh, just like that, you have three pop Axis Code, that's 5300 attack. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, Update Jammer is insane, because once you pair that up with like any Link 2, you can make Axis Code uh, that can attack twice for game. Um, yeah, and then Transcode can revive back the update or the splash mage and then for two xes we have one dweller one stallio this is another deck that can easily make dweller and dweller is insane this format it ends prank kids it ends pk those are like arguably the best decks of the format um and it's so strong against virtual world too and uh, uh, well sword soul and virtual world because it can stop like so many grave effects like the tennies uh all the virtual like you know traps and spells and stuff like that um, Stalio, thank God this card's back at one. Um, it's, uh, card should never have been, I mean, I guess, like, at the time, it seemed, like, still super powerful, but since then, the deck has definitely been power crept. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's get into test hand number one. Uh, funny thing, uh, yesterday, I actually, I actually recorded this whole video. I recorded, um, well, I, I recorded a deck profile of Salad, but... I forgot to include the Solemn Strike, like I left it in my deck box by accident, and I went the whole video showcasing like a 37 card deck, uh, and then uh, doing test hands and all that, and then realizing after I recorded the video that I didn't have Solemn Strikes, and I'm like, wow, I never saw Solemn Strike at all in my any of my test hands, and then looking through the deck, realizing that I totally forgot to include it, uh, so here we are, so this is uh, <laughs> this is take two. Uh, so here we go, first test hand. Uh, hopefully I can showcase something cool for you guys as well as teach any new players trying to learn the deck. Um, so, <laughs> look, you see, the, the this card's insane, but I mean, I guess I can't complain because we did draw the, uh, the gazelle. Uh, so here uh, we have... We have a couple of options. I guess because we hard drew Gazelle here, um, we could just risk, you know, getting ashed. Uh, because Gazelle alone will be able to help us combo. Uh, and then, you know, we'll be able to bait an ash, if anything. So, uh, I'll go mining here. And I'll search for, uh, I believe we search for Spinny. Um... I wish if we had another Cybers, I definitely would uh, would search Buffalo for sure. Uh, but I think we get Spinny because we can trigger the 
because we can trigger uh, the foxy since we have uh, we drew the field spell. So uh, without committing like our normal summon, we can still uh, we can still combo off. I could activate gazelle in here, but uh, I kind of want my opponent to think that I don't have gazelle yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the field spell, and now because I control the face up salad. Uh, I'm sorry, face up spell or trap. Um, I can activate uh, Foxy's effect. All right, so I activate the field spell, use Foxy, pitch the uh, Spinny, summon Foxy, and then I'll summon Spinny. And now we can go into our Stalio. And then I'll activate uh, Stalio here. If I get hit with an Imperm, that's actually really good because I have Gazelle anyway. Uh, but again, I'm or an, or if they were like saving the ash, uh, either uh, uh, no, I mean everybody always ash is mining. I mean it's a two for one. Uh, but uh, but yeah, if they have like imperm valor, uh, but if they don't, then I can just go for the jaguar. And I think me if I summon jaguar here, I think my opponent should already um, know that I have gazelle in hand. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Um, so here what I'll do is I actually need access to Baylinx in the grave. So I'll go Baylinx here. Okay, and I guess we'll just trigger the uh, the Gazelle. And Gazelle here, I can do two things. I can either go, I can make a Dweller play. I, I just think Dweller is so strong in this format. So you can, but you can either do Dweller or you can go uh, Counter Trap or you can go Rage. Uh, but uh, I'll show you. So for anybody that's trying to learn the deck, I'll show you guys how you do the how you uh, make Dweller. So with uh, with Gazelle, you can just send the Falco, and um, you can go Falco effect to bounce back Gazelle, and then summon Falco, and then you can use these two. Uh, actually, you can you can even do it a little differently. Uh, if you wanted to keep Stal so some might argue keeping Stalio in in uh, in gra uh, on field is is very valuable. So instead, what you could do there's just so many things. Uh, so you can go Wolf, all right, and you can uh, relink the Wolf using the field spell, uh, and then. You can go. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I did it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> let's ignore what I just did. Uh, I, I definitely had it right the first time. We actually need to go this route. Uh, so Falco effect target Gazelle revive back because the other route we wouldn't actually be able to resolve Falco. So yeah, that's my mistake. So you definitely do this if you want to be able to go the Dweller route. So using the Stalio and the Baylinks, you go into your first. Uh, your first Sunlight Wolf, and then what I like to do here is I'll just go Jaguar, and I'll shuffle back the uh, the Stallio, or I'll place the Stallio back, and then I'll revive back the Jaguar, and then trigger. I can add Foxy here, or I can add Spinny. I'll probably add Spinny, because that way I can just activate Foxy next turn, uh, pitching the Spinny, revive back Foxy, and whatnot. Um, and I actually don't need to go into a second Sunlight Wolf, because there's nothing that I'm adding. Uh, so I can just go Dweller here. And I'll end with the Ogre Dweller. Which uh, it doesn't seem like anything insane. But again Dweller is just. It's such a high impact monster right now. It stops so much. Um, and it's a lingering effect. So, And then you have the Ogre. And then next turn you have so much to play with. You have the, uh, the Falco. The Jaguar. You have the Spinny. You have the Gazelle. And you have Foxy and Grave. Just so much to be able to push an OTK. Uh, the other route you could have taken, if we just rewind it back a little bit. So we still have Baylinx here. Um, uh, Falco will be in deck. Uh, so we'll have... We had just some in the Gazelle, Spinny and Foxy. No, not Spinny and Foxy. We have uh, Stalio still on field. Um, and then we'll have the... Uh, the uh, Jaguar Engrave, right? So at this point, instead of sending the uh, Falco, uh, what you could do is send either Roar or Rage. It all depends on, I guess, what you want to accomplish. And you can just go 
wolf and then second wolf here you need to go into second wolf uh, because that's the way you're going to be able to add the uh, counter trap and then you activate jaguar to rev uh, return this wolf back to summon the jaguar and then add back gazelle that way uh, so I think this is also a really good play because you get to keep Stalio for um, for the following turn. Like if it, su if it survives, you can just use it again next turn. Uh, then you have the Counter Trap, which is just an Omni Negate for anything. And then you have your Wolf, your uh, your Jaguar as well. Um, so yeah, I think either, either or uh, is pretty strong. Um, again, if you know 100% that you're playing against a deck that is... Uh, that gets demolished by Dweller, then you just make Dweller. So anyway, let's. that was pretty good. Let's get into test hand number two. All right, guys, for test hand number two, here we go. Uh, so test hand number one, I guess uh, any competitive player will tell you that that end board is probably garbage because it was just like Dweller and Ogre or like the Counter Trap and Ogre. Uh, but with this deck, because you have protection with Baylinx and uh, you have so many resources to play around with in Grave, if you can just stop your opponent from like OTKing you, you can definitely OTK them next turn. Um, so we had like four resources to play with next turn, uh, not counting our draw. And uh, and it would have definitely meant that our opponent gets OTK. They'd have to deal with Dweller, Ogre, and still be able to OTK us. Or the, the Counter Trap and Ogre. Uh, it wasn't, obviously it's not the strongest hand, uh, but again, if uh, if our opponent, like, even if our opponent breaks our board, but they can't OTK you, it's uh, it's not relevant. Uh, this hand is, it's, uh, <laughs> if we were making access, like, we could technically go access code, but uh, that wouldn't be, uh, <laughs> there wouldn't be any point. So this, uh, this is a very, very simple uh, board. Um, we just go... Uh, relink here. It's basically wolf pass, but uh, well, it's not. It's not just wolf pass. We just we put back this summon, and then link into the wolf. Um, that way we have a body that can be protected. And um, but what we do have is we have four uh, forms of disruption. So we have the droplet, the cosmic, the uh, the uh, excuse me, the imperm, and the ogre. Uh, so with Droplet, we can still send the Field Spell. So if you anticipate that your opponent, like, I don't know, if you, if you know that you're going to be able to use this Droplet, what you can do is you could just, uh, oh, well, you can't relink the Wolf, but uh, you could just send the uh, the Field Spell with Droplet, and uh, you could just use Wolf, like, next turn. Um, you can, like, uh, like, next turn, if you have access to, uh, I don't know what your top deck would be, honestly. Let's see what our top deck would be. Uh, but if we have four disruptions with this uh, with this hand. It just all depends on what we top deck on our following turn to see if we can push. Yeah, so that would definitely help. It would definitely help us like get the field spell back. It would definitely help us OTK too because we have Spinny and Jaguar. So uh, we could OTK with it with after drawing Spinny. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, because we could normal summon Spinny, and then. We can link into we can link into another uh, wolf and then add back the field spell, um, and then we can just go spinny jaguar make uh, update jammer go into access code pop and then attack attack, and we have the ogre cosmic imperm and droplet to try to stop our opponent from at least killing us, and then we have uh, the bay links to protect the wolf if anything. So not an exciting test hand. Let's move on to the next one. All right, fam. Potentially the last test hand here. Um, yeah, that second test hand, again, it was, it's like you have the Cosmic, you have the Imperm, you have the Dropple, you have the Ogre, you have stuff to come, you have defensive cards to stop the opponent. Uh, it just, uh, the, the, the Salad uh, engine is what we were lacking. Um, even though our top deck would have been okay, like the Spinny, again, it would have just got us access to OTK. Uh, assuming that all those other defensive cards just stopped our opponent like enough and they couldn't like get rid of wolf uh, but here we go test hand number three uh pretty nice we have circle we have uh spinny uh, which is good that means we have access to gazelle so we can just like go uh i guess you could go draw phase activate to um to search your gazelle. Oh no, did I really do this? Oh no, no, okay, here we go. 
Let me fix this. All right, so we search the gazelle. Uh, we can go normal summon spinny, then link into our bay links. Go bay links, chain link one, chain link two, gazelle, summon gazelle. Resolve the bay links to search the field spell. Man, I haven't seen buffalo. We'll do another test hand after this. Uh, then we can go uh, affect the gazelle. New chain, so we can send uh, the counter trap here. Uh, we, yeah, we'd have access to dweller as well with this hand, so you can go counter trap or dweller. Uh, if you want to go dweller, you just send. Um, no, actually, do we have access to dweller? Because uh, we'd go if even if we go. Um, yeah, no, I don't think we'd have access to Dweller because we need to bounce back something with Dweller and we can't get Jaguar unless we activate Stalio. Um, yeah, so I think this is the only option. So we'll go Spinny, uh, then Overlay into our Stalio here. And then go Stalio, summon our Jaguar from deck. And now we can go uh, Wolf, and then use the Field Spell, and then Relink. Here, I think I'm just going to let Roar reset itself, uh, because I do want to add back the the uh, Circle with um, with Wolf. That way we just have, we have so much gas, I want I just want the uh, us to be able to push through as much as possible, especially on our opponent's following turn. So we'll use Jaguar Effect, we'll return Sunlight Wolf, Summon, and then add back the Gazelle. So as you can see, we have five cards back in hand, and we have all of this, which is absolutely amazing. And now what we can do is to play around like evenly matched, is we can actually use that Jaguar to go into Lingaribo. This is another reason I like to play this card, because, um, again, if your opponent is playing like uh, evenly matched, uh, you know, like it, say it's game two, game three, you can just like make Lingaribo. That way, even if you set a bunch of back row, like in this scenario, uh, usually they want to bait out the roar with evenly. But now we have this, so we we get we get to keep our roar, and we just have like yeah, we're just playing a back row deck. So uh, we have roar called by droplet and infinite impermanence, and then this we could just use it to search during our opponent's turn, or we can pro uh, protect our wolf if we need to. And plus we have Gazelle in hand for the following turn. So yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty good test hand number three. Let's do let's do one more. One more test hand. Alright guys, after this uh, last test hand, we'll end the video. Uh, I just wanted to say if you guys do enjoy videos like this where I do go in depth, I explain um, combo step by step. Uh, if you guys do appreciate that, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It would be much, much appreciated. Also, let me know if you're a fellow South player and what uh, your thoughts are on the deck. If you're currently playing the deck, or if you feel like the decks just can't keep up with today's metagame, uh, I would love to hear your feedback. So yeah, let's get right into the last test hand. Hopefully we can finish strong. I think we've had successful test hands leading up to this one. Uh, so let's see what we can do. So we have Circle, Amazing, Archiver, Will, another Circle, and Sign It, Mining. Um, so, let's see here. So we have Circle, right? Um... We have circle, so what I'll do is I'll activate circle during uh, the uh, draw phase, I guess, to avoid droll. Um, and we'll go gazelle. And what I really want to do here is I want to have access to buffalo. Um, because we also have the... Uh, we have the sign up mining and we have archiver. I really like that. Uh, so what we can do here is, there's two options. We can go mining, pitch the other circle, and we can search, um, we can search spinny or we can search the buffalo. If we search spinny, we definitely have access to, uh, we do, well actually we have access to stallio anyway, so I'm, I'm just going to go and search the buffalo here. I do want to dig... 
so what I'll do here is I'll normal summon the Buffalo. My opponent knows I have uh, Gazelle in hand, but that's not really relevant. So we'll go Chain Link 1. I'm sorry, Chain Link 1 Buffalo, Chain Link 2 uh, Bay Links here because I do uh, want to get the field spell out of my deck before I resolve Buffalo. And then I could pitch Archiver here, which is really strong. I just wanted to showcase Buffalo because I didn't draw it at all, like the first three test hands. Uh, whereas this hand, we can't afford to, you know, have access to that card. So, Resolution will pitch Archiver here. We also have the Will, and we'll search Imperm. Oh, so you see that? That's exactly why I want that. That's exactly why I want Buffalo, is to draw me into, like, my hand traps, uh, to make this hand just way better. Um, because I think that previous test hand, uh, the previous hand would have been... Uh, it pro I think it could have been like Dweller or like Counter Trap played, but I don't know if we had anything else. Uh, so I'm just, you know, again, this is the reason that you play the Buffalo. You just want to dig, just dig for like defensive cards, you know. So that's pretty good, pretty good showcase. Um, now what we can do here, we can go Field Spell, Relink the Bay Links. Uh, we would be burning through our relink, uh, but we do have will, so I don't think that's relevant. I think we'll be able to get into our uh, our wolf um, relinked easy easily, you know, regardless of whether we burn through our our relink right now or not. Uh, I want to save will. I just want to save will, um, just in case my opponent does have nib. So we'll relink into another bay links, and then that'll trigger gazelle special gazelle. Um, and then as soon as Gazelle hits the board, we have to summon it right here because we want to trigger Archiver. So we go Chain Link 1, Gazelle, Chain Link 2, Archiver, so we can chain block the Gazelle. So that resolves Archiver. And then we will resolve Gazelle. And Gazelle here, we can just send the Counter Trap. Alright, so send the Counter Trap. And now we can use these two for Stalio. Okay, activate Stalio. Summon the Jaguar from deck. And now we can use these two to summon Wolf. Um, and now we can use um, we can use Jaguar to put back one of the Bay Links. And then we'll use Wolf's effect to add back the Gazelle. And then we can just use these two for another Wolf. And I'll actually trigger Roar just to reset itself because I want to add back the circle. Uh, and again, Will, we can we can save Will. Like, if we get nibbed, uh, that's actually, you know, okay because now we can activate Will. Revive back Wolf so that way the counter trap is still live. Excuse me. And, and um, you know, we, we won't really just get blown out of the water. That way, so that's the that's that's the reason I like to hold on to Will just in case. Uh, otherwise, I think this could have also been a uh, let's see, could have also been like a Dweller, a Dweller with Ash Imperm. Uh, but again, I think this is probably the safer play. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty good. I'm really happy with that last test hand, especially what Buffalo was able to showcase for us, which is ding, digging us, uh, digging us uh, hand traps. Uh, in the form of infinite impermanence as well as ash blossom. So we have uh, three disruptions with this uh, board plus so much follow-up um, to play with. Uh, we have this, uh, we have Jaguar, we have Will, we have Circle, uh, we have Gazelle. And then next turn, um, we can like, if, if we ask them, we could add back Ash. Um, so that way we can just keep rebuilding interruptions. In case our, we can't OTK our opponent for whatever reason. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate um, everybody's feedback. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a uh, great rest of your weekend. Peace.